Because um, there's, there's always like, like there's like. It says 20% chance of rain tomorrow. You had to have like Nickelodeon to get it when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have cable for a while. 20% yeah. chance of cloudy. I'm old. Yeah, Where does this video go? Everywhere. No, Seriously? Everywhere. Get camera people. <laughs> Stay off of me. So we'll start. Um, so thank you all for coming out. Uh, we are in our last Senate meeting, so we made it this far. Um, everybody has finals coming up. Good luck on your finals. It's going to be a lot of fun, very interesting week. So today um, we brought in uh, Nancy Houston. Houston. Yeah, it's okay. There we go. I, mean, I said Houston at first. I know. Before, uh, beforehand, yeah. yeah. Um, so we have her here to talk about some things in the library. I believe, I hope that's Nancy uh, Evangelista, Dr. Evangelista. Oh, it's not. It's going to be. Thanks, guys. I had such a, we had such a hard time getting this into my car. But we were supposed to have uh, Dr. Vangelista here today, too, as well. So uh, that will be an interesting kind of some conversations coming out there. Um, but to start off the meeting, uh, really, uh, we don't have too much reports since the end of the semester. We uh, don't have any really allocations to request or to uh, um, go through. But uh, we uh, will start the meeting with uh, Ms. Uh, yeah, Ms. Yeah, Ms. Yeah, Ms. Houston coming up. Where do I go? Just stand up here. here. And then okay. Yeah. So thank you. Everyone, give a round. Hi. Thank you all for having me here um, and allowing me to talk to you all. Um, I became director beginning of July and one of the things I wanted to do was get statistics as to how the library is being used when it's being used and things like that um, so I don't know if you know those student workers you see them walking around with a clipboard and they mark down who's here not who but where people are sitting I don't care who you are um, I knew that nicely <laughs> we love you all but um, so I'm, I'm doing that to see where people are sitting when people are here it's going to be used in like if no one's here until nine o'clock, should we be open at eight o'clock? You know, that, those sort of things. If we're starting to kick everyone out at 10.30 and there's a zillion people here, does that mean we need to stay open later? So it's kind of a statistical hodgepodge right now. Um, so, and I don't even know what to compare the numbers to because this was not done before I became director. One of the things we're al we also have been doing is keeping better track of our reference questions. When we're sitting at the desk, when we're doing the chat and all of that. Um, because of that, we're going to make some changes. Um, so looking at the statistics for the reference desk, which includes online chat and the walk-up, we're going to be, re because we found that less than 30% of the reference questions at night required a Master's of Library Science. The majority of them were printer questions, things that did not require two extra years of graduate school type thing. Things that we can train students to work on and learn how to do. Um, but we're also, um, so we're going to reduce reference hours to being like 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Okay. But here's what we're going to do. I feel like we should be singing from the music man. Do you get the reference? You know what I mean? Okay. All right. You guys are a tough crowd. <laughs> okay. I know I'm doing this on camera. It's going to be embarrassing. Um, so um, we're going to start that in the fall, but we have um, individual appointments. Do you know how to get those on the internet? On the internet, on our <laughs> web page. Okay, we're going to be encouraging those. When we do library instruction, we're going to talk about that and show that to students even more. Um, and we're also going to beef up our live guides so that, I don't know if you know that we have an APA one, we have an MLA one that actually shows you that stuff. The majority of questions we get are citation questions, honestly, and they're often, is this right? Which isn't really something we should be answering because we're not grading your papers, right? Do you know what I mean? Okay, we can help, you know, you get the point, right? Okay. Um, but we're also going to um, have student workers monitoring the chat function at night. So there's a lot of times they're going to just be able to go like, oh, you need the APA style guide. Boom, here it is. So you're going to be able to go to that. If it's something that isn't that simple, they're going to direct you to make an appointment with one of us. Okay. Um, this will allow us to better serve all of you by doing the other things in the library we need to be doing, like purchasing books that were not published before I was born. And 
please edit that. Um, <laughs> okay, so does that make sense? Okay, I just wanted to let y'all know where we're going with that. Um, if, you know, if for some reason you can only come in and make an appointment, you know, at seven o'clock at night, one of us will be happy to come in. However, if you do not show up, you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> we're gonna be angry. Okay. Aren't I a delight? Yeah, thank you. Um, also, I wanna let you know, we are having um, our usual, we're cutting back on some of the snacks, but we're gonna have guest stars distributing them in a couple of the evenings. Campus guest stars, so if you wanna study in the library, you'll find out more. <laughs> we will, however, always have coffee during exam time, so, okay. Are there any questions? Does it make sense? Okay, again, we love to help you, but you're not asking us for help at certain hours. Most, literally, you guys are asking the questions during eight to five, or nine to five, or 7.30 to five. Um, because what are y'all doing at night? Sleeping. Pardon? Napping. Sleeping. Sleeping, napping, coming to meetings like this. That's, I mean, that tends to be what happens. So. We're here for you. We're just here for you under different hours. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need me to fill time until the provost gets here? No, no. Because I can sing a dance. <laughs> uh, we're we'll getting the water on the basis. Right? Yeah, well, there's that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Enjoy the best. Friend. So, uh, my initial thoughts on um, will. Dr. Evangelista coming. Uh, there might have been confusion on the day since it's usually on Wednesday. Um, and today's Tuesday, so we currently have uh, Kayla running over to her office and seeing if she's in there. She's usually in there pretty late, so we want to see if she's in there and if she, we can get her over here. Um, but in the meantime, there is a kind of topic we want to talk about. Um, Phil Lobby, uh, the Vice uh, President of Finance and um, Operations, wanted me to bring up about um, cable, um, cable on campus, and how you watch TV. Uh, we had some questions in regards to how you guys go about watching it, what you guys' thoughts on cable, if you guys use it. Um, so can I, can I get some maybe discussion going about that? Uh, does anyone want to talk about that? If they use the cable or if uh, they think it's um, efficient, if it needs improvement? My TV and cable are on in my room like all the time. So I use it a lot. Maybe? We don't get Fox Sports boards. Fox Sports? Yes. So we need to get some Fox Sports yeah. support. The Indians play on there all the time. Never okay. get to see them. Okay. Any, uh, so you, any, any, any other kind of channels you guys want on there? True TV. They have the March Madness games, and yeah. we don't get that channel either. So that's unfortunate. That's just another one. And the channel. I have a special guest. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How are you doing? Wait, is it on True TV? So, uh, yeah, it's just more, more discussion maybe on uh, um, cable. Uh, you know. How many, raise your hand if in here if you use cable, if you actually watch TV. <laughs> Raise your hands high so I can maybe count. So really not a lot of people in here. So maybe seven people out of the 20, 20, 20 or so. so less than maybe about 30%. Okay. Um, those of you that you do use cable, what could what could we improve besides maybe the channels? The resolution good? Does everything work efficient for that? Maybe moving where the cable things are. Okay. They're always plugged in. They're always in the most awkward area where you cannot like plug. Okay. Like mine is directly in front of the window, so that my TV Any other kind of comments on that? It's like report to Phil because they are currently going through. I don't know exactly what they're going through. I don't know um, what is the exact uh, mission or what they're trying to accomplish. But uh, he just kind of wants to gather some details about how many students actually use the cable. It's official. So, so what I gain from this: 30% of roughly people in here use cable. Um, Fox one. And what did you say? True TV. I think it's true TV. Okay, and the uh, position of the actual box and relative to where you're actually holding the TV. And there's anything else really I missed. I think. So that's it. Um, about that discussion, we'll have uh, Dr. Evangelista come up here. Yes. Speak. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. I'm sorry to be late. I was actually at another event, so I put on my driving shoes <laughs> and, <laughs> and scooted back from Cambridge. So I, um, Luke asked, invited me to come tonight because I understand that there's been some questions or concerns from students regarding our World Languages programs. 
and so I wanted to have an opportunity to hear what kinds of concerns or worries you guys have and be able to answer some questions. So I got some nods back there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess I'm just going to start off by saying there is no change in terms of what we're doing in terms of world languages. We have not changed any majors. We have not changed any minors. We have not changed any general education requirements or offerings for that. We do have some turnover in our French position. So our French professor is not going to be coming back next year. Anybody that has Madame's, Mademoiselle Beveau, um, she has decided to not come back. So that we, when we put the schedule together, we ended up having to do a little bit of changing. That was before that actually went up on Mosque Link. So that was actually taken care of. So I think there'd been some rumors out there, and maybe it was because we ended up changing classes when we, um, when we got that, uh, you know, the, the, the schedule changed, and then we heard that Madame um, Bevel was leaving her. Mademoiselle Bevel, I guess, and then you guys taking classes from her. But the what we're continuing to offer um, all of the world languages, majors and minors, and curriculum offerings. So that's that's the bottom line. <laughs> but I, I wanted to come and tell you that directly because I know there's been some concerns, and see if there's any other questions that come up from the students. Yeah. So I'm actually one of the French majors that this was like. This is mainly about, I suppose. So, is it just that it's not going to change for this upcoming school year, or will it change in the future years to come? Right now, we're you know we are committed to the World Languages program. Um, I think we're looking at how to make the programs as as appealing and um, beneficial as possible. So, I, I, there may be some changes in the future if we say. You know, we could do this, you know, do some things a little bit differently. And so that's certainly a possibility in the future, but right now we're not, we're not changing anything. I do know some students, if they have a class that that's the only student that needs it, it might be an independent study. And that's one of the things that's kind of, I don't has anybody here done a directed study before for any other classes? Nobody? Okay. Directed studies or independent studies are available kind of usually for two reasons. One. You might come to your professor and say, you know, I have this really great idea for a class that doesn't exist. Could you help me design a class? That's an option any student has. And then sometimes if we have a very small enrollment, we rerun it as an independent study because there's not enough students to really make a whole classroom. So I don't know if that's your situation. You might be one of the students that uh, might have a... Kind of the, in an issue with an independent study for somebody that studies a language, you just have to be able to have that interaction multiple times Throughout sure. the, the conversational week. practice, that's right. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very important to be able to stay sure. fluent and things regarding that. So would the directed study be up to the professor on how many times you yep. meet? Absolutely. Okay. And, it, and it could be done different ways. It could be done, you know, the professor saying we're going to meet, we're going to have a conversation this many times a week, and we're going to have written work or writing and literature assignments other times, and that would be up to the, up to the professor. Um, yeah. Um, so they're going to... You know, I know there's also um, conversation study uh, language tables, mm -hmm. and I think you know th that may be a way to, to weave that into in terms of a certain number of those as well. So it's, it ends up being kind of custom designed, and then we have a small amount. Do you have a plan for who you're looking to hire? We are looking at our options right now. Okay. We're, it's kind of you know we're we're looking at what uh, who might be available, and we are committed to having the best possible qualified faculty that. No French, you can provide a good French experience for oh. students. Good question. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here. Ask them. Other questions? Yeah. Um, I also heard something about uh, the person who's going to be like in charge of the like study abroad. Like I believe it used to be Mary Lynn, and that, then I thought I like her that was going to be the French professor. And can you tell me like who's going to be kind of in charge of that? Because I'm doing study abroad next year. Are, are you one of the students going to France? No, so I'm going, going, to going to Germany. You're going to Germany. Oh. Okay. Um, yes, Mary Lynn has actually been reassigned to teacher education, and she's teaching courses for students who are learning to be study teachers of second languages. So we have had a, a transition in that right now in terms of who's actually managing that. So we are, we actually have, and I, we, we have, I would say, a uh, decentralized model. So in terms of who's actually managing some of the study abroad, we have two different people that are doing the advising with students. So students who are inbound that are here as guests or here in, you know, studying at Muskingum for a year, and you maybe even know some of those students this year. We have 
young man from France. We've got some other students. We've got some Chinese students that are here for a year. Um, Valerie Smith is the advisor for those students, and she does their curriculum advising and kind of helping them get through things. Um, Mary Lynn has been working specifically getting students prepared for outbound, and she will continue to do that. So in things like if you're going to study abroad, we need to make sure that we know what classes you need to take, and are they offered at your, in, your institution in Germany, and are they going to count for your curriculum? And that's some of the most important stuff, as well as getting ready for the study abroad experience, understanding things like cultural immersion and you know the, the different kinds of norms and how the education system is set up and stuff. So Mary Lynn has, has, will still be doing that preparation for, for next year. That's our, that's our short term plan for Mary Lynn. She's well experienced with that, and that's something she can add into her, her teaching as a Another another responsibility. So she's your she's your yeah. <laughs> Good. Are you all set already? What semester are you going? Uh, I'm going in the spring, spring? semester. Okay. So I got some time. So I'm loving this this um this, this stretcher switch. here. Yeah, Dude. Kind of like a multi-purpose tool there. I love it. Yeah. I've been playing with it all yeah. Um, I heard that there's been like a significant drop in people who are like taking these foreign language classes. Is that like gonna affect anything? Like, are you guys? Like if there's like an even more significant drop, are you guys just gonna like take them away? I think that we are committed to understanding world cultures and world languages as part of a liberal arts institution. I mean that's that's the bottom line. There has been a drop, and you're right. That's that's in that's something that a lot of other institutions are also experiencing. And I think what we're doing is looking at with with fewer majors, what can we put to, what can we have as the best educational experience for students. Continuing the majors and the minors is what we're doing right now, and I think we feel committed. We have students that are taking those curriculum areas. We have a commitment to them, and we continue to want to make sure that we have the best experience possible. So, um, what the future will hold, I think we need to say: is this the is this the right path, or are there other ways that we? Um, um, I, I actually, let me let me back up. Right now, we the majors and minors are what we are committed to, and we think that's the best education experience for students. So, the the smaller numbers end up being things like directed studies, and right now we feel like we can manage those in a way that's going to be a good educational experience for students. So that's that's where we are, and I think we're saying this this is the commitment that we have to the curriculum and to the students in the curriculum, and to the concept that we need to have languages as part of our liberal arts education. So, I think. I think our plan right now is that's working really, that's working well for us. We're going to continue with that. Good question. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Do you think the school would consider doing something like a um, get hooked on world languages and offer that to both majors and minors so that it is more prominent that we offer languages, let alone three you of mean them? as an admissions event for get hooked on languages? Yes. Absolutely. That's certainly something we can do. Yeah. We've done, we actually, Increased a lot of the get hooked things for this admission cycle, and we that's something that we can certainly do is to do get hooked. Okay. We have you know, this is available for our students coming in as freshmen. There's you know, there the um, we have the entry level for all of the languages available for this fall, so that's certainly an option for our students that are coming in. But in terms of you know, looking at creative ways to make sure that we're getting a message out that we have a, have a good program, those are certain ideas that are absolutely. So, yeah. Um, I also in the French program, and it's like my second year here, and I've already had to deal with three different teachers. So, do you guys have like any? I mean, I'm sure there's not like a specific reason, but why are they like coming and leaving so fast? I do know we had a retirement. Um, I think that was probably your first year, and and actually, I I, I can't speak to last year. No. So. Um, in terms of looking for a faculty member, that's a really important question for all of us. You know, who is the right faculty member? A faculty member that we, um, you know, that can can do the teaching that we need and can help, you know, build our programs. Um, there's lots of reasons why people come and stay, and lots of reasons why they why they leave. And I can't address those for the people in the past. You know. And uh, yeah, so I think that's a good question for you to ask as a student. Um, and again. This fall, we're still looking for somebody else who'll be teaching our courses, so there'll be another another person in there. <laughs> um, and and I think we're going to continue to say let's 
make this a really great experience for our faculty members and for our students. That's the best way to build continuity. Other questions? So I'm, I'm glad French majors, saying, you know, students that are going on study abroad showed up tonight. And I appreciate you guys coming and making sure that you're here and that I have a chance to hear what your concerns are. So I appreciate you showing up. Also, <laughs> and I think while we're up, while you're here, if you don't mind, um, if we're not talking about maybe the language languages or anything, is there any other que any kind of uh, questions? Sure. Any other questions? Uh, Provost, uh, questions? Uh, sure. uh, <laughs> you know, Dr. Evangelista here, while we have her here, I mean. She's a great asset to the university, doing great things. And, uh, um, is there any other kind of questions any, for any kind of reason? About the school, maybe next semester? Anything? Yeah. So now that you have a semester under your belt, what are you most excited for about starting a new academic year? That's a great question. Um, well, uh, first of all, I'm really excited about commencement this year. <laughs> I think that's going to be really fun to, to participate in a different kind of commencement ceremony, and I'm really psyched about our commencement speaker. Everybody know who our commencement speaker is, Dr. Darden, so I think that's going to be really great. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff on the horizon that I'm really excited about, and some of those include continuing to work on um, all of the kinds of experiences that our students have that help them like, really immerse themselves in something really deeply and change basically what I consider transformational. Study abroad is one of those kinds of experiences studying in another uh, country kind of changes the way you view the world and the way you view yourself and that that's one of those kinds of experiences um, but we are taking a look at kind of inventorying all those things that we have um, internships faculty student research um, what other kind of leadership development opportunities and saying what do we have out there do we have enough so that everybody has a, a bite of the apple for those kinds of things and in, we have some faculty groups that are taking a look at the participation levels and making sure that we are paying attention to things like, is there some reasons why some students can't do things like that? What do we need to do to break down those barriers? Um, so that, those are things that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Um, yeah, so th those are some cool things. Um, I think we're uh, continuing to also think about um, advising. And I think even though, you know, you guys all have advisors, and I think we're looking at the fact that we have lots of other people that can help us do a really kind of a rich advising experience, which means that it could also involve other people coming and saying, here's these other experiential learning experiences, and that we might have a certain kind of message that we give to students as first years, and another kind of message as sophomores that you're starting to think about things like, do I want to spend a semester away, and do I want to do a summer internship, and some of those kinds of things. So those are things I'm pretty excited about. They, you know, they're they're in the discussion stages, so they're not really ready to implement. And that's one of the things that when I talk to students, you guys are like, yeah, you have that right to me right now. <laughs> and we're we're on the process of looking, you know, looking through those kinds of things as we as we move ahead. But I'm excited about those. It's really, it's fun to see what we have here already. I'm going to say one other thing. I've been really impressed with the number of field trips the professors have. I have to sign all their their payment forms. So I see, I see them all, but they're they're great. Hey, anybody here been on an interesting or good field trip in your classes? Where have you been? Yeah, the French department, the theater department took people to go see Les Mis. And Les Mis, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that's a great example. Any other things? I'm I know our religion class uh, went up to like the mosques up in Columbus yeah. and went to um, visit all around kind of the different yeah. religions up there. I wasn't personally able to go. That was board trustee weekend. So, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. anyway, it was fun. Yeah, I, I, other things. I know a group went to the Model UN in New York City. Um, I think we just had students that went to the sociology convention and presented mm -hmm. research, and students went to the psych association conference and presented research. And so, seeing more of those things unfold across the full two semesters, they were other stuff that I'm really excited about. So, that's cool. Good. Other questions for me? Other things that you guys are looking for? I think I have a follow-up question to that. Oh, sorry. Um, but you were talking about um, some things that are on the table and on the horizon and kind of in the discussion stages. Some of the concerns I've heard from um, minority students on campus is the diversity in the faculty. So I just want to know like, how, if that is kind of one of those items that's on the table that will be worked into in the future, um, That if that's come up at all for you guys. A, a group. Um, I actually, I'm glad you brought that up. I think that is that's an issue that's kind of 
becomes apparent <laughs> when you look at you know the, the demographics in terms of our faculty and they don't really match the demographics of the students and that is something that we actually have on the table that we're looking at that to me that's part of um, being a university that recognizes all you know all students and all you know diversity of contributors to the educational experience so that's something that um, is um, a lot of institutions are taking a look at um, a look at the outside in terms of who who, is it, who are coming up through this sort of preparatory ranks, and that's one way that we're people are trying to solve those problems. Is also saying let's make sure that we're if we have a more level educational playing field, we'll have more students going through to graduate school to the advanced degrees that make them ready for faculty. But then also taking a look at people at the uh, ways that you start identifying um, positions that are coming up and faculty member um, you know, areas that we'd like to recruit and attract people. So that's absolutely on the, on the, on the docket. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, I don't really know if this is like under like what you do, but um, is there any talk about like making the campus more handicap accessible? Because I know we have one student right now that's in a wheelchair and I heard that there's a freshman that's coming in. And I just know like a lot of our buildings aren't necessarily like that's no. a huge issue, Great and I'm really, that. I'm glad you brought it up. We had some consultants on campus a little while ago in February. To Credo, I don't know if anybody sure. met with them, Lucas yeah. raising and nodding his head. Um, they certainly noticed it too, because how many buildings have stairs? Lots of them, in, including facilities that need to be available for everybody. And I'm gonna give one other compliment to you guys before I sort of answer that directly. That group of consultants said, they have been at few other institutions with students who care as much about their peers as Ms. Stingham. That's a compliment to everybody in this room and all of your friends. They said, your students really care about each other. They brought up issues not just about themselves, but about their peers, and that was one of them. So the answer is, we, we are in the process of saying, let's take a look at you know, all of our facilities, and we have to take them in small chunks in terms of you know, I don't know if your parents have ever done a major renovation or put an addition on your home or whatever. It's a it's a long term investment. So we're taking a look at our whole thing and saying, what are the small the chunks that we can get at right away? What are the things that we can make you know accessible that are going to serve the most students? Right now, our students who have pretty significant physical limitations, we are dealing with those on a on a one an individualized basis. So things like you know a student who uses a wheelchair. Let's, we have residence halls that are accessible. Those need to be accessible. We might need to relocate classes, and so we're doing that on an individual basis. And that is, it's absolutely in compliance with what we have to do for accessibility for the federal law, but it's also a way to make that experience good for that person. In terms of what we do with our facilities, every single facility that we put money into, accessibility will be one of the things that we look at for putting money into it. So that's absolutely on the docket for anything that we do for renovations. Accessibility is a first ticket item for anything that we do. So we're sort of looking at our inventory of needs and they're pretty significant in terms of how many buildings that are not accessible. So we'll be looking at what's gonna have the biggest positive impact for the most students when we start looking at building renovations. Good question. I mean, I, it's an illustration again of exactly what our consultants said. You, you guys care about each other and that comes up. So while we're on the topic, I'm actually very close with the student who's being referenced here. And one thing I've noticed is like she's in a really awful kind of situation right now because she lives in Memorial and she's not a freshman and that's pretty much a freshman hill. And she has to live off campus next semester because they're telling her she can't continue to live in Memorial, which is the only building she can truly have access to. And she lives on a very secluded floor, like the ground floor of no more. And it would not be very hard to make more handicapped accessible rooms there, and that's not something they're willing to do. Um, so I was like, okay. she has to live off campus next semester. Okay, I I would be happy to talk again with Res Light and problem solve with her as an individual in terms okay. of what we can do about that. I will certainly bring back the fact and say let's take another look at what what um, what the situation is for her specifically. But I would be happy to reach back out and say let's let's sit down and make sure that we're actually understanding what needs to happen and from you know from her desires and her experiences as well as um, any you know any constraints so thank you for being here
Yes. Also, I'm sorry. With, like what you were saying, like the individualized thing. I don't know how they feel exactly about that, but like from what? Because I went to high school with her, and like I know she just kind of like having the whole individualized thing like that's nice and like that's like the law or whatever but like I think they would like it a lot more if like it was just everything was already accessible and they didn't have to move things around because they feel like a big bother and like also like if parents come like to move their kid in or something and they're on the third floor or something and they can't even go up there or just like just even like outside visitors like it's just like I think everything should be accessible and it shouldn't just be like We'll, we'll get there when that comes, like, well, I, you know. I, I agree, I, mean, I think our, our goal is 100% yeah. accessibility, and I think we have to take it one step at a time, but I, 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 I absolutely agree with you. You know, I'm, I'm just a special ed teacher <laughs> and, uh, and a school psychologist, and those are things that are really important to me personally, um, but I, you know, that is absolutely our goal, 100%, and, and right now, we just have to take one chunk at a time, and I, I totally agree, it'd be, it'd be a, a very different message to say everything is absolutely accessible. Um, we have, you know, we're an older campus and these things were not built with the right kind of <laughs> accessibility in mind. So we have to slowly say, here's the next one, let's make that one. Here's the next one, let's make that one. Any other questions? If not, well, I'd like to thank you for coming. Absolutely, thanks. thanks. I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. I have one more thing that I want to make a compliment on. Sorry. You're good. But this was my mus first Musky Palooza. And my first day concert. <laughs> <laughs> I walked down Montgomery Street at 5 o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. And what I saw was students who were having a good time who were obeying rules and being respectful. That's what I saw. I went to a big concert. What I saw was students who were enjoying themselves and having a good time and being respectful. And I just want to compliment the student body on those things. I think that they're, uh, seriously, I, I have said to anybody who asked, and a few who didn't, but I, I was really impressed with the way our, our students took their responsibility to be good neighbors and good citizens um, in, a, in a serious way and, and, and really showed yourselves really well in, in terms of that. So that's a compliment that I want to Thank give to the student body. I was like, here I am. I'm just going to experience it all, soak it all in. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I thought this is okay. So um, even the music was tasteful on Montgomery Street. I'm like, <laughs> okay, maybe it changed when I left, but when I was there, I was like, this is fine. So, so again, that's a compliment to, you know, to the, you know, students who care about other people. You know, I think that, that came through here. You had it, people had a good time, but they did it within the, we know within the confines of this is still a residential neighborhood and we know what what's um, a respectful way to enjoy yourselves and, and I saw that happening. So again, my compliments to the to the Thank you. and you guys were awesome. So. Good job guys. Thanks so much. Do Take care. Okay, great. That's all. He's over here with this. What? I don't know what you do with that thing, but it's um, like it's a, pretty, it's a humor point for me. Yeah, yeah, it's something just to like <laughs> so, play with. Thanks, everyone. Good to see yes, you guys. You. All right. But going off, going off of that, too, as well, I think that um, that's very important to make sure that, you know, the students here have fun. And, it, you know, mm -hmm. we all have a good time. It, it is college, but it has to be good balance. And I think that's very important. I think over the past couple of years, for the most part, um, some of the students have, have learned kind of to uh, know how to have fun in, in in a good way, but I still think they're um, in the future, as the next couple of years kind of go on. I think that's going to be a lot of, uh, we can have really good conversations with both the administration and students on both sides uh, to see what that balance is and how we can continue to go about the best route to um, uh, have fun and be respectful at the same time. Right, right. And you guys did it just right. Thank so. you. Thank okay. you. If we Thanks can so much. Okay, great. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. All right, so thank you guys again uh, for coming out. Uh, I really don't have too much more to talk about. Um, we had some great discussion here today. It was a good last night meeting. Um, and uh, I think, uh, as we all know, we have um, Kayla being the new president next year. Um, so congratulations on Kayla. And, uh, everybody else, uh, for the most part, um, is, is returning except for um, Pat is going to be graduating. So. 
Congratulations, Adam. I myself am retiring. Zach will be coming back. Zoe will be coming back. Gabe will be coming back. Kayla and Holly, they are retiring as well. <laughs> um, Mason is coming back as I believe a sophomore um, person. Jillian will hopefully be coming back. Be I'll be up for election in the fall. Exactly. And Peyton will be returning as a um, PR chair. Yeah. Yeah, let's congratulate everybody. And <laughs> Maggie has a has a hand. Uh, I don't know if this is the right time, but I am in the thick of trying to plan Fall Fest, and that's like a mini musky palooza. Like, I don't think as many people like pull that off. But like the festival part, that's what I'm looking at. Um, and I want to know what you guys want, because I'm not like a super fun person in terms of inflatables. Um, anybody else smell bad? But I want to know what everyone else wants. So if you guys could just toss any ideas to me. Yeah, so, something with foam. Something with foam? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, hey, party. Like, one of those, like, big things, like, with foam, and, like, do it, like, at night, and there are, like, lights and music, and, like, bro, that would be better. That would be so much fun. I would go to that. No, I don't go to it. Yeah. Get, like, the really sketchy, like, amusement park rides that, like, old rattle <laughs> when you ride them. <laughs> they cost, like, $500. <laughs> I really like the inflatable and like the bull ride. Mason, that's not okay. Mason, that's fucked up. Yeah, a lot actually. I was never good at it, but it was fun. The bull rider. The bracelet. Okay. Can bring back a novelty item. Is there any other comment from what's wrong, Zoe? Nothing. Oh, okay. That was a really bad joke made. Alright, no. Is there anything like that could have been changed from this palooza? Don't forget the baseball thing. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't me. Okay. Um, but like you were trying to get like a array of things, and we brought some really large inflatables last year, and there were some that honestly were kind of petrifying to people. Like there was one where you jumped off, and it was like a forty foot drop. No. Yeah. I thought I was gonna suffocate. <laughs> get a rock wall. Can we get the? Uh, yeah, that's always a possibility. Um, I would. I am always down to bring a dunk tank. Yeah, um, yeah, I was also in the dunk tank last year. That was it was freezing. Uh, but we do it in September, and so sometimes the weather can be hit or miss. And we did it in April. And it was like 60 degrees, and we were shivering. Um, so like, if I can find four people who can like sign off on getting in a dunk tank in the third week of September, we will bring a dunk tank. Um, so if any of you want to be in a dunk tank, I'll even let you guys be in a dunk tank. Sorry. What? <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just, I volunteer for you. So yeah. Food trucks or corn dogs? Okay. Food trucks are very expensive, but I will work on it. And like, the thing with food trucks is you can get them, but if we can't have anything that charges people money into like, so to supplement that, we can only serve probably like 100 people, which isn't really, like, that, that's kind of a buzz kill if you get there and you can't get a corn dog. But I can look to see what our company can provide. If it's not a food truck, we might be able to get corn dogs just like. Is this the refuse? Is this the Yes. Yeah. I know there's um, a Kappa Sig alum who has a food truck, and they brought it for the like, Delta Color Run. Or I mean, it was down there during the Delta Color Run, so maybe you could like talk to them and see if they would be like willing to do something. I don't know. We charge people for the weekend for that. That would change. Um, what about like local music? We can definitely look into that. We have a couple people that are relatively. We always have our performer the night of Fall Fest, and right now that's I don't think that's going to change. Um, so yeah, yeah that's even, definitely even professors. No, yeah. professors play instruments or dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. Is there anything else? Any other comments? Ideas? If you have anything, you can just email me, even over the summer. I don't do anything else, so. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. It's gonna be fun. Do we, do we have fall fest this month? Yeah. Didn't we really? Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. I don't either. I never heard of Yeah, that. there weren't a whole lot of people there, so. Yeah, we should. Third week in September, third Saturday. Oh, we just call it Musty Blues, uh, Fall Musty Blues. <laughs> That's it. Uh, we can get more people there. <laughs> All right, so. Um, We'll go to open forum. Is there anything else anybody wants to mention? Anything next semester you guys want to see happen? We talked about a lot this semester, um, whether it be from getting 
uh, swipes to the local community and like, use nine dollars and like, new stacks. I think that's very important. I think that's something really could be really interesting uh, that we can continue to work on next semester. Um, so we'll we'll see what uh, what goes on next semester. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys can do. Um, so I just want to take a quick second. This is my first semester on Senate. It's been rocking. Um, I just want to take a second and thank Luke. He's been president for the past year and a half. He's been on Senate since he was a first year, and he's done a lot of incredible things for Muskingum. Um, obviously, he's not returning next year. I'm filling the big shoes that he has um, created for us. So I just want us to take a quick second and uh, thank you, Luke, for everything that you've done for us. Um, thank you for teaching me how to be a leader and all of that. And we are really excited for the new changes, the way that you guys work to restructure Senate. I think it's the most efficient way for this campus. So um, thank you for all your thank hard you. work. I thank you for being very happy. I just wanted to make sure that you had a conversation. Thank yes. you so much. You're welcome. I don't think we have anything else. I'll accept the final word. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, so, so that's something that like I've personally noticed on campus, um, and I mean, Pey me and Peyton have both noticed it. Um, but there's two things actually. I don't. I think we have like an array of people who live in like different residence halls. But how are your guys as washers and dryers? Okay. Bad. Horrible, right? Good consensus. All right. Um, and then if you guys had the option to like use color printing in your dorms and in all of the printers like in the library and stuff, is that something that you guys would be interested in or do you guys not use color printing? Definitely as an education major, there's a lot of things that are like really useful to color code, especially if you're going to plan a lesson. So that would be something that even if you had to pay more in print balance, I'd be definitely interested in that.